Hope you like the lunch. So uh, let's continue with our conference. The next presentation is about the future of AnyLogic, AnyLogic 7. Uh, it will be presented by uh, CEO of the AnyLogic company, Andrei Barshov. Uh, thank you, Timofey, but uh, not just me. We have two guys over there, uh, George and Nikolai. Their, their names are here. George is head of AnyLogic development and uh, Nikolai is a uh, technical lead. So we specifically wanted to bring these two guys here so that you know the faces behind the product and you know who to, who to blame or who to praise. <laughs> All right. Um, in, at the end, I will uh, unveil their email so you can directly contact them for <laughs> feature requests, bugs, uh, et cetera. Now, um, guys, this presentation is uh, slides only, no live demos, and even very, very few screenshots. We're in the middle of development effort. This effort is big. So uh, don't expect anything fancy looking, uh, just ser very, very serious slides. Uh, first of all, uh, this is where we're heading. Uh, and that was the, uh, let's say, in the initial design of, in the initial idea behind AnyLogic to provide the new standard for uh, simulation modeling uh, for business application. I'm putting business applications here uh, uh, as opposed to, let's say, engineering simulation, where you need different languages, uh, different people are doing that, and uh, different numeric methods, etc. But we strongly believe that the languages uh, that we <coughs> implemented as a core of uh, any logic uh, can be used across, efficiently used across many areas. And this is actually, as you probably can see, is what is um, happening. So um, these are things that are not going to change, that are going to stay uh, unchanged in any logic. Uh, we will remain general purpose simulation software uh, with specific support for some verticals, but that I will mention that um, at the end of the presentation. We will still be cross-platform and uh, we will be based entirely on Java and Eclipse, so Windows, Mac and Linux, uh, web-enabled models and uh, object-oriented hierarchy, reuse, all that sort of stuff. Uh, we will continue to support three modeling methods, uh, agent-based, discrete event, and system dynamics, and we will do uh, more to uh, really integrate them. That will be uh, uh, in this presentation further. Um, we believe that, um, uh, about this, this bullet point, that for serious models, uh, not for toy models, logics and graphics uh, are to define separately. So that will stay, uh, that will concept stay in any logic. Um, it will be easier to link graphics and your process flowcharts or agents, uh, but they'll, they'll be defined uh, separately and linked easily. And uh, Please, guys, don't worry. Compatibility with version 6 will be fully preserved. All the models will be able to run on version 7, so no, uh, no surprises. Key features. Um, we're doing a lot of merge and consolidation in uh, key concepts of any logic. Uh, we're uh, heading towards minimalistic modeling language, and uh, we're doing a lot of things in this direction. Um, we're also unifying space uh, uh, in our models, and we're doing a new uh, space, uh, new uh, let's say template for new uh, elements for space markup. Uh, we're completely redoing the library for discrete line modeling. Uh, Nikolai is personally responsible for that, <laughs> and. Uh, uh, <laughs> And uh, we're uh, redesigning our UI. We'll focus on usability uh, and uh, minimizing coding. Um, 
we'll be explicitly supporting some verticals through libraries, agents, uh, agent libraries, and different bits and pieces in uh, various places of any logic, and uh, where we'll be building scenario manager. This line does not mean that scenario manager is not important, uh, but uh, it is coming a bit later. So um, most of this stuff you will see in August 2013. Uh, for, for those deadlines, the, the other person was responsible, George. And uh, uh, scenario manager and uh, additional support for verticals uh, further in 2014. Okay, uh, objects. Historically, we were adding features to any logic as we were, uh, you know, working with more and more users and uh, uh, gaining understanding in uh, different modeling methods and applications. So we have things like uh, active object, agent, three-dimensional agents, NED, resource unit, etc. So these were things that were added uh, as we were uh, developing our, our product. We're merging all of them into one agent uh, with just one thing replacing all those things and having the functionality of all of them. So uh, agents will be able to dive to, into a process, jump back, uh, act as pedestrians, etc., cetera, um, et cetera. Benefits for modelers. One uh, explicit benefit is that uh, those who did um, descriptive end modeling remember how to create custom entities. Not Java classes with fields, etc. Not anymore. Now, as long as entity is agent, you will be able to graphically define entity internals, fields, uh, methods, and even entity behavior if you want. Um, like state charts and timing. Uh, any debate statistics, time spent in blocks, um, time and system, cost, that sort of stuff will also be defined at the graphically, um, at the, let's say, agent entity level. Um, easy to inject entities and remove them from the process. Uh, easy to convert. Okay, I'm pedestrian uh, at the very, you know, moving in a space, uh, taking care of you know, obstacles, etc. then I'm becoming an agent, then I'm becoming a, an entity in a discrete end model. Uh, very easy. So let's say those who saw the uh, epidemic and clinic model were built at Wintersim uh, a few days ago. Uh, now you will be able to say, okay, uh, when, I'm, when I discover symptoms, I become an entity in this clinic flowchart. When I'm, when I'm treated, I jump out of the flowchart and continue to act as an agent. So that will be a lot easier. It's, it's possible now, but it will be a lot easier. Uh, other things. Uh, space. Right now, we have uh, animation guide shapes for uh, our queues and delays. We have a separate thing, network-based modeling, pedestrian space with its own space markup. Uh, agent space. Again, not anymore. One three-dimensional space uniform for all kinds of applications. Uh, benefits. Uh, no matter what you're dealing with, be it entity, resource unit, agent, car, train, pedestrian, uh, that thing we now will we'll be calling agents those things, will have uh, X, Y, Z coordinates in one unified space. Uh, other benefits is that, um, okay, we do have pedestrian modeling, so we do process the uh, um, layout, right? And we do have a uh, network built underneath, so why not letting other um, moving things use that network, like agents or cars? So that all will be uh, available. And we will have new uh, uniform space markup. Uh, you probably remember that in Analogic 6, we do use uh, just general shapes like rectangles and polylines to uh, mark up your uh, layouts like this. In Analogic 7, there will be special shapes that will correctly link to each other you will be able to uh, do curve segments, um, 
nodes of arbitrary um, shape, like for example that one, etc. So there'll be a, a special set of shapes for space markup. Uh, and they will be recognized by the flowchart objects and, and agents. And the network uh, with like shortest path things will be built for you um, uh, for um, layouts marked with those um, elements. Uh, new library for discrete event modeling. Um, well, minor but important thing, um, we will be implementing pool entity flow as well as push. Push is the current default um, default protocol for entity flow. We will do a very flexible uh, resource management and that is a part of our support for healthcare. You guys, well, those who were ever involved with uh, modeling hospital processes may know that these are most complicated processes to model because they not, do not, uh, let's say, uh, map nicely to simple resource management that we have in traditional software. So we're, uh, we're changing that, addressing the healthcare area. Uh, and also some material handling support. Now at this point I'll call uh, Nikolai here to briefly, uh, Nikolai you have like three minutes for four slides. Pull, just follow, pull, new pull protocol. Current uh, implementation uh, of uh, enterprise library offers a push protocol when entity exits a block, she, it should uh, go out and uh, go to the next block. In this example, we have a conveyor which uh, can accidentally uh, break, break down. In this case, uh, some processor, for example, a robot, should uh, also be uh, delayed and entity should lay there. Uh, in any logic six, uh, this could be implemented using three blocks, queue, delay, and some queue. Uh, hold delay and some queue. This hold uh, <coughs> is blocked when uh, entity is in this queue. In any logic seven, this will be replaced by single delay block, which will have pull ability. Entity is ready, it's a timeout, it's elapsed already, but it doesn't the delay block because it cannot be consumed by the following conveyor. So the next uh, improvement is a, one of the major improvements in the new library is a flexible resource management. Uh, first of all, we'll merge different uh, kinds of resource units where we'll be no uh, regular or network resource units and uh, all resources uh, will mm -hmm. operate with tasks, no enti not entities. Yes, that will be entities, but also some tasks like failures, uh, maintenance, and all of these will have their own priorities and uh, they can interrupt each other and preempt. For example, if uh, uh, in a hospital doctor is uh, busy with some patient and uh, some urgent patient arrives, uh, doctor can uh, leave uh, his current task and uh, go to some more priority task. And there will be different policies on what to do when he returns, on how to serve the interrupted task. So also uh, there will be a flexible uh, way to define uh, resource preparation and resource wrap up, which will be done independently on the entity. And the uh, library will provide uh, different statistics uh, which will be automatically gathered. They include uh, entity processing time, entity delay time, cost basis, uh, analysis, uh, uh, entity contents uh, in uh, some block, uh, queue statistics, and so on. And uh, in a new library, we will in increase our support for material handling modeling. Our new conveyor will be smartly connected with uh, the following, with the next conveyor. The entity will go through, not instantly, but uh, with aligned speed. So 
when the successor uh, succession conveyor stops, uh, the preceding conveyor also adjusts its speed, for example. There will be different modes for this. Also, the library will include some uh, specific uh, blocks for manufacturing, like cranes and robots, and uh, modeling, where, modeling of warehouses uh, will be improved uh, in uh, ease of use and in performance, too. <coughs> so that's <coughs> all for now. All right, thank, thank you, you, Nikolai. Uh, new UI. Uh, focus on uh, usability. We have uh, obviously accumulated uh, the typical, well, usage patterns of mouse moves and clicks, etc. And we will try to minimize that. Uh, so we will have new properties window, uh, new palettes, uh, space markup, we already talked about that. Mm. 3D, we will not provide the uh, 3D editor. We don't want to do that, at least in the release seven, but we will uh, do a 3D preview window. So that it'll be a lot easier to compose that static uh, three-dimensional scenes. Um, we will uh, modify our code completion uh, and code wizard. Um, if somebody, well, there were, you know, different vendor presentations at the Winterson Conference, and uh, I heard several times that, okay, this is <coughs> drag and drop, only no coding required. Uh, well, I treat this sentence as a purely marketing thing, because for uh, real models, uh, you have to have a way to express logic and data structures in the model. So you have to have a certain language for that. And, um, we will continue to have Java as the only textual language in any logic, but we will simplify uh, writing expressions and statements in Java by providing uh, better code completion, and also we will do a code wizard. And uh, we have some other minor improvements like 3D objects. Now, uh, George will uh, spend, again, three minutes, uh, on the UI improvements, please be uh, uh, fast and uh, just, you know, just a uh, quick hello. overview. Uh, I'm a little bit nervous now because I have keep all personal responsibility for all these things. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, what we're actually going to do in next uh, release, major release, is to improve the um, uh, user experience. First of all, we're going to do uh, the new properties. Now, you, as you know, you have uh, uh, different tabs and all properties are grouped on different tabs. In uh, Analogic 7, we are going to have uh, one tab, so actually it's no tabs, and all properties in one uh, list, but we're going to create uh, uh, collapsing groups, and uh, you, as you can see, uh, it's much better and it's easy to use, and also we are going to move uh, more frequently used properties to upper, uh, so uh, the next uh, big improvement is that we uh, <coughs> will have one um, place for uh, value and code values. Uh, I mean that if you have, a, for example, line color, and you can easily switch to line color code uh, by pressing one button. You don't need to switch between two different tabs and find the uh, place where you have a coding yeah, well, for it would design time and mm -hmm. uh, dynamic properties. Yes, yeah. mm -hmm. exactly. Uh, after that, we're going to change uh, our palette. So now we have uh, properties on the right side and palette on the left side. And uh, the palette will be uh, redesigned. So uh, currently we have uh, uh, a lot of different elements. So we going to remove all the steps and create the small buttons that will be opened when you uh, move your mouse and uh, in uh, collapsed uh, state you'll see all elements so do, uh, now in, on small screens you will see only tabs no elements in some cases for example on netbooks with small uh, screen resolution and in new version it will be much better in this case 
also we're going to add uh, a lot of different 3D objects uh, from different uh, spaces to support our vertical solution as solutions and uh, for manufacturing and material handling and different vehicles and just uh, 3D uh, primitives. Uh, I think that's it. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, George. Scenario manager, a longly awaited thing. Uh, you know that at the moment you can uh, create all those types of experiments, uh, but it takes a while, and there is no centralized uh, framework for managing them. So what you will have in any Logic 7 is what we call scenario manager. Uh, it's a uh, support for experiment design and, and running. It will uh, include a database where you will be able to store versions of the model, uh, parameter sets that we've used for runs, and simulation results. Um, with obviously charts and graphs, all kinds of charts and graphs available uh, for the user. And uh, we will have options uh, for, let's say, having the scenario manager on the same computer where, where you're running any logic and uh, running a um, model runs on server and the database is on server and you have a thin client, like a web client to, uh, uh, to create your experiments, to run them, and get and get results. So, uh, <clears throat> two two possible architecture for this scenario manager. Um, all right, uh, this is uh, the last slide that I have, and uh, then we'll proceed to questions and answers. So, uh, we always have this, you know, um, alternative try to be as horizontal as possible and cover uh, many application areas, or just you know, to go into a particular vertical. So with uh, any logic is horizontal, and it will stay horizontal. Uh, I mean, its core model language will stay general purpose. But we are going to support some verticals uh, explicitly to simplify modeling in, uh, in particular application areas. Currently, we do have already um, pedestrian and rail simulation and the preview version, this, this is really a uh, halfway uh, done thing, uh, the traffic, car traffic library, car uh, micro simulation. Uh, what you will uh, see in AnyLogic 7 is additional support for transportation, logistics, and supply chain. Uh, manufacturing, material handling, and uh, healthcare. So these will be the um, three application areas will, that, that will get um, specific and uh, extended support. Now, uh, I'm done with the slides. Uh, and uh, questions, please. Yeah. Thank you for the presentation. Thank you. Oh, yeah. um, thank you very much for the presentation. I, th I think the improvements look, uh, look really good and definitely welcome um, from the UK market perspective. Uh, I just have a, a slight question, possibly in contrast to the way that your product development is going. In the UK, and certainly for myself, uh, one of the things we value is your closeness to Java. Uh, and sometimes we're frustrated by your cut down use of the Eclipse environment and the, and the lack of Im inclusion of the improvements that Eclipse has made, particularly to the debugger and to the other aspects mm -hmm. of Java, the stuff so that we can possibly automate the building of getters and setters and the like. Is there any opportunity, possibly in the professional version, to look at including a, an mm -hmm. enlarged Eclipse in any Logic 7? Thank you. Uh, well, first of all, I'll, uh, yeah, yeah I'll, I'll, I'll invite George here. While he's uh, walking here, I can say that uh, this is a, uh, uh, we do receive requests like that. We cannot provide the full uh, Eclipse functionality for any logic user for a number of reasons, but let's say debugging, already done. We have the proper Eclipse debugger now already available in AnyLogic 7 for any logic users. 
Uh, other small things like you, uh, the, every function or variable is a link. You can uh, like click on it, go to where it is defined there on their way. So uh, George, just maybe a couple of sentences about it. Uh, yes, uh, uh, we also expect to add uh, um, more uh, useful uh, code completion into the uh, properties in, in Java source code. Uh, and in, it will be closer to Eclipse code completion, but it will be tuned to using any logic. So you'll see first all your uh, elements from your model, and then you'll see all Java things in, in code completion. And also we are going to extend our Java editor uh, to be uh, more like Eclipse Java editor uh, with uh, uh, different uh, new features that we're going to add to copy, to copy from Eclipse. Is, I think it's uh, in the seventh version, it will be uh, f f uh, easy to, to use it if you code Java. Mm -hmm. ah, thank you, George. So uh, we have two types of users. We have users who love Java and want to you know, have any logic as a kind of uh, Eclipse plus graphics. And we have users who just don't want to code. And uh, for them, we're doing this uh, code, uh, code wizard. Okay, so we're addressing both contradicting, uh, let's say, uh, audiences. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, can you expand a little bit regarding the geographical information features? That the, I don't know mm -hmm. if there were any changes. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Uh, a lot of requests for that. Um, uh, currently, as you know, we have GIS in there, there and uh, you can do a few things with it, like let objects move in geographic coordinates and do some simple things like paint regions, etc. Uh, we will be extending the list of things that you can do with the GIS and we will allow the, uh, let's say, programmatic access to uh, uh, GIS, um, uh, G GIS system. So yes, we do have requests, it's on our list. It may not uh, appear in August 2013, but definitely in the next uh, major release. Hi, uh, when working with uh, large amounts of data, primarily input, uh, I'm normally used to, to using either Excel or Access, whatever database to actually manage that. Should I continue with that or do, I, do can we expect some kind of closer scenario management in terms of that with the new version? Uh, f for, uh, well, the only, um, uh, let's say, change here will be to the uh, uh, simulation results data and uh, parameter set data, which will be managed by scenario manager. As for other input data, uh, we will uh, continue to rely on our connectivity with Excel and database. So that's, it's not going to change uh, a lot. So, yeah, thank you. Uh, so you've, uh, I already have the mic right. front. So you've told us that in the version 7 there will be more 3D things and there will be just one active class which is all the entities, resources and so on. Correct. Having a lot more functionality. Mm -hmm. So that's nice, but uh, how, will it, uh, how will it affect the speed of simulation? Since one thing I really mm -hmm. like at any logic is that it's fast. Mm -hmm. The more functionality you have, the less speed it will probably have. Mm -hmm. um, let's say I'll, I'll put back uh, this slide. Uh, surprisingly, we, we were, of course, thinking about it. Uh, surprisingly, uh, agent now is smaller than the entity in terms of number of bytes. If empty agent is smaller than the empty ag uh, entity. Uh, so, in fact, by merging things, uh, we will make things more efficient. Uh, and we will make sure, let's say, if you don't define dynamics within an agent, it's very, you know, light and, uh, and efficient. And it's uh, for simple like queuing models, uh, there'll be zero performance impl implications, both in terms of uh, memory uh, and in terms of uh, CPU consumption. So we're taking, taking care of that. And uh, Nikolai uh, did a lot of work during the past uh, six months in this direction. So don't worry. 
right, I'll, I'll ask a nasty question. Um, I went to the Simio presentation uh, a couple of days ago, and I was quite surprised to see them give away their software to academics for free, which are quite... I, they do that with a purpose. They don't do it because just like that. So the nasty question is, what about pricing? Is there any changes or...? Pricing? Well, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, uh, we uh, think that if someone gets something for free, uh, he tend not to value that. And uh, we're not going to uh, be giving uh, any logic for free to two universities. Uh, but we have, as you know, huge discounts for, uh, for academics. And uh, what is more important, uh, for every uh, university version that we uh, sell, we uh, guarantee support. So students can write our support asking questions, or a like ex asking questions, how do I model this? And I have a kind of deadline approaching, how, how do I do that? And our support is, uh, is handling those, those questions. So in exchange for that you know, very small amount of money that university pays, uh, we uh, do a lot in, in, in return. So, uh, and actually, the, uh, those 1,000 universities that we list uh, in, uh, as our clients are universities who paid for Analogic who are actually using Analogic for teaching, not just the free downloaders of, uh, of our software. What about the other prices? Are they, hmm? they, the other pricing, are they, they the same? Or they the, same? the pricing, pricing structure? Uh, it, it'll, it, it'll stay the same. So uh, it'll, we'll, we're not planning on, let's say, saying version 7 is so much, so much better, like cost 50K dollars. No, it's, it's going to stay the same. But that, Timofey is the main person to ask, so. Yeah, we will keep the same prices. Sure. Yeah. All right. In which direction do you plan to go with this healthcare library? Because mm -hmm. healthcare is a huge topic, so mm -hmm. you could go into emergency department simulation or into right. cost-effectiveness models. Okay, we, I partly uh, addressed this already with our resource management. So uh, if, if we talk uh, about like processes simula simulation hospitals, uh, they'll be addressed by a lot more flexible resource management. So we will prove that, uh, if, uh, that uh, if the library, the block library and the resource management are set up in the right way or still be able to describe complex processes in a hospital as a, uh, in a, let's say, uh, easy to use flowchart way. This is one thing. The other thing is the uh, agent-based support for that, uh, like standards uh, and, um, let's say, reusable and extendable agents for, uh, let's say, people, for ep ep epidemic modeling, for patients, uh, and, uh, other kinds of things, uh, special support for policy modeling in healthcare. Uh, and in fact, uh, our partner, Snade Osgood from um, uh, Saskatchewan and Jeff McDonald from Australia are uh, working currently on any logic solution for healthcare. They're mainly concentrated on healthcare policies. So uh, that, uh, more information will be available in, in February. We have a special meeting in Australia on any logic for healthcare. Thank, Thank you. you. Well, more questions? Uh, yeah, I think okay, we yeah. should yeah, finish yeah. this because we have other yeah. presenters coming, but we will be available in the lunch break and always. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>